Over the last 100 years of cinema, one can easily notice that Hollywood studio films are almost always in line with the status quo in Washington and the wealthy class vision for America. Recent examples can be seen in the pro-war cinema post 9-11, even though no evidence of weapons of mass destruction was ever found. But the most obvious example is the seemingly pro-white nationalist stance of 1930s isolationism during the rise of the Nazi party. In line with America's own debilitating history of white supremacy, such as the genocide of Native Americans, the slavery of blacks, and eugenics of Central and South Americans. But on December 7th, 1941, at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, a date which will live in infamy, the United States' entrance into World War II would mark one of the greatest flip-flops in attitude, scope, and content ever seen before in American cinema. Today, World War II is one of the most obsessed film topics produced by Hollywood, with an estimated 1,300 films directly addressing or referencing the war, convincing modern audiences of the false narrative that America was always interested in stopping Nazism. Washington would brazenly acknowledge the power of the media's influence, creating the Office of War Information, a propaganda branch of government. Help win the war became the slogan of the time. The propaganda machine America needed started with an assembly line of star power. Jimmy Stewart flew 20 combat missions. Clark Gable lost his wife, Carol Lombard, and also enlisted. But the perfect formula of popcorn-styled mass cinema mixed with deeply ingrained democratic ideals will become one of the most celebrated and admired films in cinema history. Casablanca, 1941. One of the most quoted movies of all time. He's looking at you, kid. Originally a play called Everybody Comes to Rick's, the rights were bought by Warner Brothers' most outspoken critic of the Nazi party, Jack Warner. The film went into production before the attack on Pearl Harbor, when 60% of Americans still refused to join the war effort against Nazism and fascism. I'm not fighting for anything anymore except myself. I'm the only cause I'm interested in. Based on real experiences the writer had in France, smuggling money to families attempting to flee, while refugees and Nazis are entertained by a black man just tables away from one another. Go down and knock on wood. Casablanca benefits from tailored American propaganda writing, astonishing use of cinema, perfect timing, but above all, Casablanca had Bogart. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she walks into mine. Hollywood legend has it, Humphrey Bogart did not want to be in the film, calling it one of the worst scripts he had ever read, as did his European co-star, Ingrid Bergman. Last night I saw what has happened to you. The Rick I knew in Paris, I could tell him he'd understand. But the one who looked at me with such hatred. I'll be leaving Casablanca soon and we'll never see each other again. But the masterfully performed character of Rick, white tuxedo, cool, calm, the staple leading man for generations to come. Bogart is even honored with the distinction of being the founder of the Rat Pack. Will I see you tonight? I never make plans that far ahead. The entire film is deeply saturated in propaganda, from the opening shot of a lonely Rick playing chess with himself, a mirror of the U.S. stance on the war in Europe. I stick my neck out for nobody. Rick is a cowboy in a lawless land with no side but his own. What's your nationality? I'm a drunkard. But much like the Western cowboy, Rick operates with a code unable to totally look away from the weak and unable. For example, Rick slyly helps a young couple win a game of roulette, earning the bribe money to purchase their freedom. I'm shocked, shocked to find that gambling is going on in here. You're winning, sir. Oh, thank you very much. The United States has to decide whether it will or will not join the war to stop the spread of Nazism. 
Casablanca symbolizes this complex decision when Rick comes upon exit visas, forcing him into a similar dilemma. Selfishly take care of only himself, like American isolationism, or stay and fight. Rick, hide me. Do something. You must help me, Rick. Do something. Rick. Rick. The sudden arrival of Rick's ex-girlfriend Elsa, played by Ingrid Bergman, symbolizes the deep wounds of a broken heart, just like the horrors of World War I. A painful, physical reminder, magnified by Elsa's new boyfriend, Victor Laszlo, a stoic freedom fighter, presented as an almost angelic figure, symbolizing America's once dedication to protecting freedom and democracy, now seemingly forgotten. I remember every detail. The Germans wore gray, you wore blue. Rick, like in all great westerns, will eventually find his moral center and help Elsa and Victor escape, gunning down a Nazi general in the process. The clear, obvious, almost popcorn cliche, good will always triumph over evil. The nightclub Rick's is a visual representation of the United States, multicultural, international, populated by refugees from around the globe in search of freedom. America. To America. To America. However, in this scene, the melting pot is challenged by Nazi General Strasser as he tightens his grip on Casablanca, inciting a display of Nazi nationalism in the form of singing a German anthem. Rick gives the permission to drown out the Nazis with a French song of liberation. From the first shot of a real-life chess master Humphrey Bogart to his last monologue, an American propaganda rallying cry. The needs of the many, the common good, outweigh the needs of the one. I've got a job to do, too. Where I'm going, you can't follow. What I've got to do, you can't be any part of. Ilza, I'm no good at being noble, but it doesn't take much to see that the problems of three little people don't amount to a hill of beans in this crazy world. Someday you'll understand that. Casablanca has one of the most misquoted lines in all of cinema. The phrase, play it again, Sam, is never actually said by either Bergman or Bogart. Play it once, Sam, for all time's sake. Casablanca won an Oscar for Best Picture, Director, and Screenplay which is odd considering the film was shot in sequence due to the fact writers Julius Epstein, Philip Epstein, and Howard Koch wrote the film while in production. And welcome back to the fight. This time I know our side will win. Casablanca remains one of the most powerful and pro-World War II propaganda films in the story of cinema. Allowing Hollywood to brush its once isolationist and seemingly pro-white nationalism stance of the late 1930s under the rug and unleash a steady stream of pro-American World War II films for generations to come. Louis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship.